Hi, I'm Andy Glass with stvracking.com. Today we're going to do a quick little assembly video and go through all the components of the STV racking system. We're going to start with the STV racking towers and then move through all the components that go into those towers. The video is timestamped in the video description, so if there's a specific section you need, go ahead and check that out. This is October 25th, 2022, and this is the most recent assembly video. If we add content or add to the system, we will add that footage at the end or in the appropriate times within the video and re-upload. So be mindful of the wardrobe change. Let's go ahead and get started. So we'll go ahead and get started with assembling the towers, but before we do, I wanna quick point out a couple key factors. Each part is labeled right, left, top, bottom, top, bottom, and then the two nailers. The top and bottom are interchangeable, so it doesn't matter where you put them. On the sides, they are directional, so the right obviously has to go on the right, left obviously has to go on the left. We put the labels towards the front, and then another way you can look is there's two holes on the back for screws for the nailers. So the nailer holes are on the back, the label is pointing towards the front. Now we start out by assembling the uh, towers with some glue, 18 gauge brad nails that are approximately one inch in length to tack the parts together, and then we countersink and screw one and a quarter inch screws to secure everything together. One thing to note too is we're going to put together two units. This first unit has 32 millimeter hole spacings and the second one has 16 millimeter hole spacings. What that allows you to do is get basically a tighter stack up of the products that you put in this case. Now in this video we're going to be going back and forth between the camera view here and close shots. So if you see that hole spacing change, just realize that we're assembling two, unit, two units and we are going to uh, interchange those clips. Also keep in mind that this unit that we're putting together here is 36 inch tall just for the ease of the assembly video. Standard units are 71 inches tall but can be ordered in any size. Now we like to assemble the units with the top facing up to add the top and bottom, and then we'll flip the unit over to add the nailers. That makes sure all the parts are nice and flush on the front. We'll add a little glue. Now we use one inch brad nails to give us enough bite <clears throat> to tack the parts together, but not risk splitting out the wood. Now we like to pre-drill and countersink to make sure the wood doesn't split. And you want to have your uh, pre-drill, your um, drill bit here, to be extended farther past your screw, that way it won't split. So with the top and bottoms tacked on and screwed in place, we can now flip the cabinet over and attach the nailers. Now there is zero support to prevent this from racking, so you got to be careful when you flip it over. Now new to the current system is we've included holes that are pre-drilled into the side for the nailers. But we don't apply glue to these, we just tack them in place. should be noted that there is no pre-drill on the top. You have to manually countersink those and locate them. Now with the four screws, one on each or two on each side of the nailer, we're going to go ahead and put three on the top and three on the bottom to give it a little bit more rigidity. Go 
those three screws in the top and bottom really add a lot of strength to prevent racking and tie the tops in with the sides. And that's it, this first tower is completed. So now that we have the tower assembled, let's talk about the trays. First we have our pack out tray, half inch tray that accepts our torpedo dock. Here we have a three quarter inch locking adjustable shelf. We'll get into that later, but I have it on the table here to show you the torpedo dock setup that goes on this half inch tray. Now, next we have the different width. It's very important because the cabinet width is specific. So pack out, uh, DeWalt, rigid, all those can go right in here in this wide specific one. Festool sustainers and other sustainers have their own specific width. The pack out and the sustainers are the only one with retention design. On the back is a little dovetail slot in the back two pockets and then we have a little 3D printed latch that gets screwed onto the front that keeps the sustainer in place. The Tough System, uh, Rigid, all the other brands out there are just pockets. So they register in the pockets and have a nice uh, locating feature. We are working on some R&D for retention mechanisms for the other brands, but they're uh, coming down the line. So keep an eye out for an updated feature. We're gonna go ahead, now no matter what tray you're putting in with the exception of the locking adjustable shelf, we'll talk about that later, the drawer slides on the cabinet and on the tray are identical process. So that's what we're gonna cover right now. So we're gonna go ahead and pick the Milwaukee half inch tray for this because then we'll demonstrate how to um, install the torpedo dock on this tray next. But drawer slides, slide them apart, lift this lever, pull the drawer or tray side out and then the cabinet member. Do that to both sides. Now when we set up the drawers and trays in the system, we always work from the bottom up. We're gonna take our Euro screws and it's very, very easy. The system is pre-drilled, so all you have to do is put the slide in place. And I'm gonna sneak in from the back side here. So when installing the drawer slides, three pre-drilled holes here, they're smaller, so you wanna run your Phillips screwdriver in them just to widen them a little bit. We do a smaller hole so it grabs more meat on that screw. Always install the front one first and then the middle or back in any order, it doesn't matter. So with the drawer member that attaches to the cabinet complete, now we can attach the drawer member to the tray. And we use these one inch long Phillips head screws and the trays are pre-drilled for three holes, three on each side. Now we include extra screws where if you want to um, add them to the side of the tray in case you have uh, a lot heavier stuff, we do include that hardware, but our system only drills the three holes. And for some reason, if, you're, if a hole or a tray doesn't come pre-drilled, we use the vertical slots. We use the vertical slots because that allows us to adjust and fine tune the shark lock mechanism later in the video. One side complete. It's nice to do it vertical, but I'm trying to give you the best view. And to start out when you install them, put them right in the middle of that slot. Now the next step for the pack out tray is installing our torpedo dock. We have two HDPE rails with the four square drive screws. And then we have our latch with three Phillips head screws. Now each torpedo dock comes with one latch. That is a full size width pack out. You can order additional latches that allow you to put them on the side to do two half width, or you can do all three and have the flexibility to go a full width or two half widths without changing or adding to the setup.
And just like that, our standard torpedo dock is installed on the Milwaukee tray. So here we have a pack out. It gets set right on top, pushed back, and now that locks in place. So it's physically retained to that plate. Just like undoing a pack out, lift that lever, pull it forward, and now it's free. When you install a tray, just like any drawer slide, you want to go nice and smooth. And that first press in is going to be a little bit tricky. So move it back and forth a little bit. And now it's installed. We can demonstrate the pack out going in. And again, that is fully retained. And I can lift that whole thing up. Adding the drawer slides like we just did is the exact same no matter what tray you have. The only difference, again, is the Milwaukee Packout torpedo dock that we have on top of that one, and then the sustainer latch for the sustainer plate. And that's simply done by drilling a hole through this pre-drilled mark. Just do it right in the middle. And you want it just tight enough to where it will move, but stay in place so it has enough friction. So now when you set a sustainer on here, you flip this up, it locks to that T-lock connection, and you're good to go. For a tough system, rigid, etc., it's again just pockets. No additional work besides adding the shark lock and the drawer slides on the side. Next, we're going to go ahead and install the shark lock. So for any pull-out tray, the shark lock is the mechanism that keeps that tray shut while you traverse around town. We're going to go ahead and install the components that go on the cabinet itself, and then we'll install the shark lock angle bracket on the half-inch tray. First step is to take the small self-tapping screw and the spring on the top of the shark lock with an impact. Now, you got to be very, very careful here and start slow, but a lot of downward pressure. And you don't need to seat this all the way in, just enough where this self-tapping screw bites and won't come back out. Just a couple turns and this spring is still loose, but that screw will not back out. Next, we need to install this lever to the case using the longer system screw. And we like to apply just a little bit of wood glue to the system screw after it's put through the shark lock lever. And what this is going to do is it's going to add a little bit of friction and grab down the road. Now we want to put the shark lock lever in the hole right above the drawer slide. And again, that little trick, run it in that hole. Now you want it to be able to move freely. Next, we grab this stud that the spring will hold on to, which is going to be this hole right above the lever on a 32 millimeter spacing. It'll be two holes up if you have 16 millimeter spacing. Now, you need a lot of pressing force so that grabs right away. And then the next, probably the hardest part of the install, is putting the spring around that stud so we can pull this out. And now we can put the angled portion on the tray using the two machine bolts. Now you want it pressed up against the drawer slide. And now when we shut the case, the lever lifts up and locks it in place. Now I can't pull that drawer slide out until I lift this lever. It's a really, really neat system. Next, we're gonna assemble our locking adjustable shelf. Now we already have the torpedo dock installed on top. We saw that process earlier. Now we have to install the locking part of the locking adjustable shelf, and that is two components. One, it's the stud that goes into the cabinet member and here we have this brown cam lock that goes into the 20 millimeter holes on the side. There's three per side. Good. Now when installing the locking adjustable shelf, we want to go right above this because we want to put the Milwaukee Packout drawers up here. And this is why we start from the bottom because 
we can now get a really nice tight fit to this one down below. So what we would like to do is that's going to be the next one. Basically, I was just identifying what hole series. Now again, the So now with the locking studs in the cabinet itself, we can slide this in. It's a pretty tight fit, but you would pull this out and then take a screwdriver and rotate those cam lock functions to lock that in place so it can't move. With the locking adjustable shelf installed, these are perfect for the drawers and also crates that you just need to take out, not necessarily open up and access to your trailer. Put them in place, push them back just like normal, and now you have full access to your drawers and this thing's fully retained to the cabinet and that locking tray. We'll go ahead and pull that out and we can show you the exact same thing with the crate. Here we have our STV crate spool holders. Check those out on the website. Now this is again locked in place and registered. Now we're going to assemble a drawer. I have a 6 inch drawer here in front of me. STV Racking offers 6 inch and 12 inch height drawers. We can offer some custom stuff but it is a different look than what you see here. So if you're interested in that, message us and we can walk you through those steps. All the parts are labeled. You have a front, a back, a bottom, and then a right and a left. Now the right and the left obviously are directional. The STV Racking logo is on the front top of each side. And then there is a special hole in the front that allows the stud for the shark lock to go into. We also have three divi dividers, two smaller ones and a longer one. We'll put those aside. And we like to assemble the drawers just like the cases by tacking them in place with some brad nails. I'm going to assemble this the front facing you. And we like to add the sides first and these have interlocking finger joints to make assembly a breeze. Place them together, slip them on. It's kind of a little bit of a puzzle at first. And then you take the front. You can put glue on these if you want, but the interlocking mechanism, the screws, all that stuff is extremely strong. We have um, probably two dozen drawers in our fleet and we've had zero problems with them. So now with everything in place, we can go ahead and take the brad nailer and tack all the joints. So with that tacked in place, we can then use our countersink. Now we do include these one inch screws. They're the same screws that um, screwed the drawer slide member to the tray as well as the drawer. But we do include them if you want to use your, um, to assemble this. You need a number six countersink with the appropriate pilot hole so they don't split. We have a better hand drill to make each joint fast. There are screws on the middle, front, and back. Be a little rigidity. Your 
first drawer will be a little bit slow as you get used to the process, and then you'll get extremely fast at it. So that is a fully assembled drawer ready to go. We can take our optional dividers, place them in the drawer. You have one long one and two short ones. And this particular drawer is not milled because it's an older style, but there'd be two grooves here. Now the beauty of this is you can mix and match what dividers you have in there. If you want it split this way, if you want to take this out and put these two in here, a uh, lot, a lot of flexibility to the dividers and the drawers. Installing the drawer slides members to the drawers is extremely easy. Everything's already pre-drilled on this bottom. Now the drawer is ready to go. The only thing we need to add is the stud for the shark lock mechanism. Now with the drawer assembled, drawer slides on, we have to install the quarter 20 bolt that is the shark lock stud. We can't use the angle bracket for the shark lock because it's not a tray. So we have to use this stud. We put three washers on and then we like to use a driver. You can get away with a wrench or a socket, but if you have a lot of these, it speeds it up. Now there is a special drilled tapped hole down here in the front of the drawer that is specifically for this stud. And you're complete. The matching pair of shark lock mechanism is identical to the trays and repeat that installation process. So with the drawer slides connected to the cabinet, shark lock in place, just like we installed earlier, the stud and drawer slide members are installed. We can just slide the unit. And now that shark lock keeps that drawer from opening until we lift it and it pulls out. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this overview and general assembly video for the STD racking system. It was a long video and hopefully we covered everything. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns during the assembly of your STD racking system, shoot us an email at stdracking at gmail.com. Thank you for supporting our small business and we hope you enjoy your STD racking system. Have a great day.